Michaela, the survivor you rescued from Demora Station, has provided some very interesting information about both the Tal Shar and the new race with which they've allied. Meanwhile, the Romulan Republic and neutral colonies are continuing to report mysterious abductions. We believe these two events are related. Tequila wants to go home to her colony on Serini Prime. The colony there has remained independent from both the remains of the Romulan Star Empire and the burgeoning Romulan Republic. That puts them in a delicate balancing act. We thought taking Tequila home could be a good opportunity to figure out what's happening behind the scenes of the Romulan conflict. We would like you to go to Serini Prime and investigate. And I'm certain that a friendly visit from a Federation representative bringing home a lost lamb would have no small part in trying to sway the colony to the side that supports the Romulan Republic. After disposing of a Romulan Star Empire research facility that was studying the Borg, we've picked up a few survivors of the station, Tekela among them. And after checking in with Admiral Tanay, her request to be ferried immediately back home was granted. I thought it probably would be, after all the rescue isn't complete until you're back home. But many colonists end up displaced due to the Federation Klingon War, and the change of territories, so sadly it wouldn't be an unheard of story for them to end up as refugees. Warping into the system, we are met with an imposing barrier to our progress. A network of interlaced glowing purple shields seem to be encasing Serini Prime in a luminescent honeycomb cage. Each segment has an emitter array in the centre, meaning that each likely has its own power source. Taking down the whole thing would be a time-consuming task. At the single opening that we can see, there's a Romulan signal from the Star Empire. Tarsi calls this setup a blockade, and I suspect that's a fair assessment. Tekela interjects. I can't thank you enough for returning me. It looks like the Romulan Star Empire has been busy while I was away. They were already lobbying our council to join them, but Romulan Republic envoys are there as well. Now the Empire is blockading the planet, probably to prevent information like ours from reaching our leaders. The shield wall is new. I guess the Tal Shiar constructed it. You should be careful. This is hardly the first time we've had to play nice with the Star Empire. Don't worry, everything will probably be fine. It looks like the barriers are in close orbit of the planet as the two moons lie beyond its shields. I can't imagine how difficult it is to maintain a neutral state between the fledgling Republic and the Star Empire, especially as Serini Prime is home to some 4.7 million inhabitants. The population of the colony exploded after the Hobus system went supernova. Oh, exploded. Poor choice of words there. As we approach the planet, we see that new segments of this honeycomb shield snap into existence. Their sudden appearance suggests that the shields are not always active and only power on when a sensor of some sort detects an approaching unauthorised vessel. This would save power, suggesting that the Star Empire's blockade is set up for the long haul. As we approach, we can hear the energies humming, somehow in space. So let's greet our watchdog. This planet is protected by the Romulan Star Empire. State your business. Commander Jamal. Well, let's start with some idle chatter, shall we, and ask what's this all about then? I didn't realise that Serini Prime was under Star Empire jurisdiction. Technically, it is not. However, the Empress has graciously extended her protection to all worlds in this region of space, including Serini Prime. There have been recent reports of terrorist activity on the planet. As a service to the lawful residents, we are securing the world against further intrusions. We know that Jamar is referring to the Romulan Republic, an organisation that they brand terrorists. I can't imagine that the residents here had a choice in the matter. Speaking of choices, we've got a number of options here to talk our way past. We can say we've come to trade, or we can come clean about our mission, however we did rescue Tekela from the Star Empire, so telling them she's on board isn't really that smart of an idea. Or we can tell them it's none of their business. It's none of your business. Then I shall make it my business. This option results in an immediate exchange of fire. But let's look at the other options, shall we? This planet is protected by the Romulan Star Empire. 
State your business. We've come to trade. I have many stem bolts self-sealing. Excellent. We welcome peaceful contacts with the Federation. I assume you will agree to submit to a routine search for contraband. Lower your shields and prepare to be boarded. Uh, no. This planet is protected by the Romulan Star Empire. State your business. We are returning a citizen to their homeworld. Indeed. Identify this citizen. We can lie and make up a name, or we can be honest. Her name is Tekela. That is the name of a fugitive wanted by the Romulan Star Empire. Lower your shields and prepare to be boarded. Uh oh, not good. So what happens if we tell a lie and just make up a name? We have no record of that colonist. Lower your shields and prepare to be boarded. All of these options give the Romulans ample opportunity to instigate a firefight and declare that they were only following standard procedure, adding fuel to Sellers' misinformation about the Federation's intentions. They'd attack us, whatever we'd have said. After all, they cannot allow the return of one of their test subjects. Doing so would turn the Serenians against them. The fight against the IRW Raya is a tough one, with the Dideridex immediately trying its trademark tactic of holding us in place with a tractor beam and bombarding us with the slow-moving heavy plasma torpedoes. The tactical officer ability Fire at Will here allows for multiple phaser shots against multiple enemy signatures and is a good way of dealing with these devastating warheads. However, the targets are random, so popping evasive manoeuvres allows for us to fight the tractor beam and pull away from the vessel, as well as abilities such as polarising the hull plating to slip away. Of course, as we've learned before, with the destruction of the Armager A, RIP, a distance of 5km can keep us away from this infamous ability altogether. However, that's not an easy one with this mission, as hailing them necessitates us to be within 7 kilometers, meaning that a simple drift forward and they can easily close the distance. Still, with a ranged hit and run attack, we can bring them down. Yep, that was satisfying. Beyond the gateway lies the taunting green and blue, a familiar and welcome sight to those who like their planet's Garden M-Class worlds. With the warbird destroyed, we can set a course through the barrier and return our wayward wards. The scale of the barrier is incredible. The resources on show here to manufacture such a planetary isolating grid are extensive, to say the least. I guess with the Romulan Star Empire's overwhelmingly militaristic, state-first orientated approach to society, they must focus a disproportionate amount towards warfare and security. I can't help but find it funny. This blockade perfectly emulates the Star Empire's desire for isolationism, paranoia and xenophobia, literally fencing off a planet of such a scale. Of course, it would be the Romulans who came up with such a device. When we're within range, we can of course now finally beam down. I can't believe I finally made it home. Thank you. I... I never thought I'd see this place again. I would give you the grand tour such as it is, but I need to get back to my family. I never thought I'd see them again either. You should talk to a representative from our council. Follow the path ahead and it will lead you to our central square. There should be someone you can speak with there." And off she runs, eager to reunite with her family, and who can blame her. Serene Prime is a truly alien environment once we're down. Having materialised on the shuttle pad at the outskirts of the settlement, we can get a good overview of what a Romulan colony looks like. The structures are squat for the most part, and seem to be more than merely temporary fabrications. Well, this has been a colony for at least 26 years since before the Hobus incident, so it's to be expected. This predates the fracturing of the Romulan Empire, then. The ambient hue of the sky is purple. I wonder if that's natural, or an effect produced by the barrier encircling the planet. After all, if you look closely, you can see the tessellation of the barrier's individual shields through the clouds. 
Upon entering the courtyard, we see that there are representatives here from three factions. Members of the Star Empire, that could be troublesome if they know about what we did in orbit to get here, as well as individuals from the Romulan Republic. Standing between them are the representatives of the Serene Council that Tekela mentioned we should speak to. Jolan True, and welcome to Serene Prime. Oh, thank you for returning Tekela to us. I'm sure her family is pleased she is safe. However, you have arrived at an interesting time. I was just preparing to meet with representatives from the Romulan Star Empire and the Romulan Republic. Each are urging our colony to join their faction. We've done our best to stay out of the conflict until now, but I fear we will soon be forced to take a side. Yes, we met one of the Empire's representatives in orbit. He tried to stop us beaming down. He's dead now. Probably don't tell those guys that. Probably shouldn't have told you that. Yes, the Empire has a way of offering assistance that feels more like a threat. They offered security services for my world, and I could not risk refusing them. And, to be fair, there have been no abductions since the fleet began protecting the planet. Security services? <laughs> what is this, the Orion Syndicate? And what's this about abductions? A number of our citizens went missing in the weeks before the Empire arrived. The Empire blames the Republic, of course, but I think Sila likes to blame them for a lot of things. There's no evidence they are responsible, however. In fact, there's no evidence at all. And I think that if the Republic were behind these kidnappings, they would leave some trace behind. If you would care to speak to the representatives, I would be interested in hearing what your opinion of them is. Councillor Ryu is a smart individual, it seems, and she suspects Sela's true motivations, and I'd agree in a heartbeat. However, let's see what the diplomats have to say, though I doubt there's much that could change my mind. You are not welcome here, Starfleet. Yeah, 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 that's not your call. The Councillor asked me to speak to you. Then she is a fool. The Federation are allies of the terrorists who seek to destroy what remains of our glorious empire. You will do nothing here but sow dissent and unrest. Well, I've got time. I also know that you destroyed a ship protecting this planet, with callous disregard for the safety of the citizens of this colony. I have nothing more to say to a murderer. Oh, totes, blew to pieces, bits of- oh, I mean, he left me no choice. You had no choice? Those words have been the excuse of monsters since time immemorial. Rawr. On the chance, however, that the Council is foolish enough to be swayed by your biased opinion, I will explain that the Romulan Star Empire is Serene Prime's only hope for peace and stability. We alone possess the military strength and operational effectiveness to keep this planet safe. The terrorists from the Republic can only offer them a portion of their own loss and suffering. The Empress has already sent ships to defend this colony. That is evidence of our intentions. Yeah, that went about as well as I expected. Let's talk to the representatives from the Republic then. A pleasure to meet you. What can I do for you? What's your mission here? My intent was to speak to the Council about the advantages of joining the Republic. Fortunately, I arrived before the blockade, and the Council has extended their protection to me. Otherwise, I'd probably be on my way to one of the Tal Shiar's prison facilities by now. The Empress likes to hide her threats in a few layers of deception and lies. It can be difficult for a peaceful world like Serene Prime to resist. But if we all stick together, we will be able to rise up and defeat the Tal Shiar once and for all. An ambitious goal, Subcommander. Good luck. So, the Republic representative, Tamanda here, is effectively stranded, arriving before the blockade was established. With only a handful of the Star Empire's forces here, the Empire cannot risk arresting or killing her. Doing so would likely incite the Serenians to revolt against the complete disregard for their neutrality, and at the minute they do outnumber the local Star Empire forces. Before I render my opinion in full, I want to look around the settlement to get an idea of what would be best for the people here, gather an understanding of the situation. 
This certainly is a tranquil planet. There's even a distant cooing noise in the wind, perhaps generated by these floating fungal things. There is Romulan iconography everywhere here. The raptor, with its wings raised and V-shaped ornamentations in the walls, they all show a strong sense of national pride. After all, this colony was established before the decline of the Empire, but the colonists haven't rebelled against their culture or dismissed it. They very much consider themselves Romulan, but wish to remain uninvolved in the Star Empire's conflict with the Republic. Sadly, I don't think that's an option anymore. Well, what did you think of them? Well, my opinion is clearly biased. As a member of the Federation, our government supports the efforts of the Republic and opposes the tyrannical grasps of empires such as Sela's monarchy. But if the colony wants to remain safe, they could side with the Empire. But I think that the Empire is responsible for the abductions, as Councillor Ryu puts it. After all, we rescued their citizen to Keller from the clutches of the Empire not long ago, so siding with them is like doing what the schoolyard bully says to do to avoid being beaten. You're not really safe if they can simply renegotiate their position at a whim. We can suggest they try to remain neutral, but here we stand, surrounded by factions, encased in an isolated bubble. As I mentioned, I think the time for neutrality has come to an end. The last response is simply saying it's not my decision and that she should follow her gut, which is true. The Prime Directive forbids me from interfering in a foreign government's politics, but she's not asking me to interfere, just for my opinion. So I think you should side with the Romulan Republic. An interesting perspective. Thank you for your suggestion. Our most convincing evidence comes from a survivor of Viranat, and if his story can be believed, he says he knows who is behind these abductions. You should speak to him before you leave. He's behind that building. So the counselor seems to think there is more to the presence of the Empire and the Republic being here too. And we have a supposed survivor of these abductions behind that building. That building. There's a lot of buildings here. Times like this I'm so glad for video game quest markers. After a moment's searching, we find Relkan working at a station and ask him about his colony of Viranat. Yes, I was at Viranat. My family died there. My friends. It wasn't terrorists who destroyed my home and it certainly wasn't the Republic. It was the Tal Shiar and their friends. But you don't have to take my word for it. Viranat has been abandoned since the attack. Go see what our Empress does to her people! Ah, so the Counselor had an actual testimony from a survivor who alleges that the Tao Shi'ar of the Star Empire were responsible for the abductions. She is indeed clever. This wasn't about getting our opinion on the representatives. This was a test to see if we could be trusted, to see if our instincts linked up with her own suspicions. We take him up on his suggestion to visit Viranat ourselves and gather our own evidence after all. Currently, we are free to come and go as we wish. I take one last look around Serene Prime before we beam back to the Armager. How are those mushrooms floating? Is it some sort of natural gas? How do they feed? Is that what the tendrils are flawed? Do they anchor themselves to the floor when they're bobbing around to get nutrients? I wonder if they're edible. And what happens if there's a storm? When we return to orbit, however, several Romulan signatures emerge on sensors as they decloak. You are wanted for crimes against the Romulan Star Empire. Lower your shields and prepare to be boarded. <laughs> <laughs> we get the frankly brilliant, you lower your shields and prepare to be boarded. Uh, fortunately, one of the signatures turns out to be from the Republic as well. You appear to be having some difficulties with the Tal Shiar. Please, allow us to assist. This is the least we can do for our allies in Starfleet. We'll be glad for the assistance, Commander Zareth. And with that, the tables are flipped and we engaged the loaned Deridex. <laughs> that response, it's just like the captain's just sort of like, 
Ah, no, I've had enough of your BS. That's it, I'm done. No, thank you, Commander. Thanks for the assist. With that mild inconvenience out of the way, we clear the barrier, plot a course for Viranat, and go to warp. Tomet is quick to point out that there is an eerie silence over this system. No signs of activity. No satellites, just a once thriving colony world. Emptied. It's not long before we locate some debris hidden among a belt of dust and rocks, and a thorough scan of it reveals it to be the remains of a Romulan vessel scorched by battle. We move on, following the trail of dust as if it were a highway in space, terminating at a bright point of the system's star. Another wreck further on diverts us from our course and we investigate. A scan of the debris reveals it to be of unknown configuration, perhaps too twisted from battle to piece together, but certain energy patterns still emanating from it match in our database. As Elachi, the debris here doesn't appear to be anything vital, so Tomet believes that the ship survived whatever happened here. But the Elachi? Well, I thought it would be the Herogen. After all, we know they were working with Sela to attain Borg technology for her. Well, the presence of a third party, or is it fourth now, complicates things even more. Could our survivor be wrong? Tarsi speaks up. There was a blip on our sensors. Another vessel? But she dismisses it as an echo. It's understandable. The atmosphere is tense, and it's enough to make anyone feel a little jumpy. We should beam down and look for Answer's planet side. Well, this place is a wreck. The damage stems from a few months ago, and the only life signs from nearby are some insect life, no doubt moving back in to reclaim that which the settlers have abandoned. Hopefully they're not hostile. There even appears to be an cell embedded in the ground jutting out. It looks like it's perhaps from an old 23rd century bird of prey. Well, the analysis of this whole fragment matches Romulan alloys, so it could be from the colonists. After all, the older ships that can still fly often find their way to agricultural worlds such as this and are used simply for transport. But something brought it down, crashing on top of this settlement. These scorch marks are bodily remains, no doubt. This silhouette-like burns are often the result of a high-energy discharge such as a powerful disruptor. Though many weapons now result in complete disintegration, oh, these shadows make it all the more haunting, as if in a horrifying way the colonists are still here, trapped in a moment of time, as they burned. Let's find what we came for and leave. Well, looks like these critters aren't too bad. Oh, no, no, they were just going for Tarsi, apparently she's the more tempting target. We dispatch them and move on. I guess we'll just try and avoid them where possible from now on. After all, when they die, they tend to explode into a pile of goo. Clambering over some busted gates, we find more scorched silhouettes. But were these doors forced open? They don't seem to be blasted off of their hinges by ship fire, and the ones around the corner are dislocated too. Forced down by ground forces, perhaps? It looks like there was some sort of festival or public event going on at the time of the attack. Overturned tables, scattered stools and felled posts indicate a major battle, or a stampede of panicked people trying desperately to escape from the chaos and confusion. Following the decking to its end, we find our first intact corpse, but unfortunately before we can investigate it, the local fauna takes an interest in us once again. The body is mottled by burns, strange bulbous formations, and decomposition has already rendered the form grey and twisted. Tomet, our medic, reports that the plasma weapons are the cause of death, plasma weapons like the Romulan disruptors. But there is a strange fungal growth present. Tomet alludes to Installation 18. Once a main storyline mission, this is now part of a side quest that I'm going to have to go back and find. Apologies, but 
the Star Trek Online periodically revamps and reorganises its mission structure and occasionally they leave odds and ends and references in the scenario that are now removed from the main series. Rest assured, I'll include it in the playlist at an appropriate point so as not to upset the chain of events. Consider it a spin-off if you would. After dealing with some more pests, we scan a fallen windmill blade. It seems that alternative power sources are utilised wherever possible among colonists. While it makes sense to use what resources you have and diversify your reliance on power sources, we collect a sample as whatever brought this down did so with massive explosive force and may have left some energy signatures for us to analyse. At the outermost eastern edge of the town, we find the fields where the agricultural work was done. There's little debris here, but the fields are barren, picked clean by opportunistic insects. A water wheel sits unmoving in the river, marking the edge of the settlement, and a notable crater lies in the centre. Analysing this reveals that it was created by Romulan plasma bombardment. But why here, on the outskirts of town? Perhaps it was to herd them into the centre, to keep them all contained. Well, the ground is still fertile it seems, a bunch of flowers have bloomed in the absence of cultivation. Perhaps there's a future for this planet as a colony world still. We head back to the centre and then south to examine the water supply and find it still fit for consumption, so no contaminants here yet. Backtracking, we then follow the streets west from the centre dispatching several more overly ambitious insects, and we enter the residential district. This site has signs of heavy structural damage with several collapsing buildings and blast marks. This looks more like the damage inflicted by a ship to ground fire. But standing out amid the ash greys and muted browns of the town is a glowing device of clearly non-Romulan design. It lies at the base of a silver and aqua windmill and is markedly different by its dark coloration and spiteful design. Before we approach it however, let's secure the area. Well, there's nothing down here except a flower. The Scaverin wonders who planted it. Thanks for your input, Scaverin. Critical as always. Hey, remember that time you got hit in the head by a Gorn throwing a rock? Ever wonder if that did something? Back at the strange device, we note its muted screeching signal and Demet theorises it's a beacon, again alluding to Installation 18. I swear I'll find these side quests and add them in at some point. We take many detailed scans, as many as possible, after all I think there's more going on here than just a Tal Shiar attack. From the other side of the colony, we detect a subspace transmission. Locating a suitable comm station, we log in as a guest user and discover an unencoded, open message from Empress Cecilia being broadcast across her domain. Citizens of the Empire, it is with great sorrow that I report the destruction of our colony in the Viranat system by the terrorist insurgents known as the Romulan Republic. I believe most of the residents of Viranat were loyal subjects of the Empire who were unaware of the terrorist cell hidden amongst their homes and families. Their deaths are a tragedy. When the Tal Shiar attempted to remove the insurrectionists and save Viranat and its people, the Romulan Republic destroyed the entire colony rather than submit to the lawful authority of my forces. I grieve for the loss of innocent life. Rest assured that those responsible will be found and punished for their crimes against the Romulan people. Viranat will not be forgotten. Before we can process what we just heard, strange energy signatures matching the beacon we found materialise around us and five levitating drones beam in. They immediately attack us, but their design seems almost organic, not at all like a Romulan device. They were quickly dispatched, destroying themselves upon defeat, but they again attracted the wildlife. So we had to terminate them too. Scaverin contacts us to inform us an unknown ship has decloaked and powered weapons. We need to beam back to the armager now before we can raise shields. Apparently it was a scout vessel of some kind, which means reinforcements may be about to appear, and sure enough, two more ships show up. 
a Sagolf escort, likely the scout ship, and a bigger Quilush corruptor, which somehow teleports behind us instantly and locks on with a tractor beam, while the scout vessel deploys some sort of energy field. I've got no idea what's going on, but they're trying to hold us in place, so that's good enough reason to move. Whatever that energy weapon was, it culminated in a punch that took down our shields. It looks like we're dealing with some truly advanced technology here. Alright, one down, they're not that tough. We round the armature on the second ship, bringing our phaser cannons to bear so we can pummel its shielding and break it down. But as we close in for the kill, persistently chasing it, it disappears and reappears some distance away, behind us. How'd it do that? Inter-system warp? No, not over that short of distance, surely. Or perhaps it folded subspace or cloaked and moved? Nah, maybe some kind of mushroom-powered magic jump. It doesn't matter, we blew it up. And now we've received a priority subspace transmission from Starfleet Command. To all Starfleet vessels, our allies in the Romulan Republic are under attack by the Tall Shar. All combat-ready vessels are ordered to report to New Romulus immediately. Individual orders to follow. Right, we are on our way. Thank you for responding so quickly. Your orders are to rendezvous with Battle Group 5 at Viranat and proceed to New Romulus to reinforce our vessels there. The battle is already underway. Good, good. Our own investigation already has us at Viranat, so Battle Group 5 must be here about... Glad to have you here. Let's get to New Romulus. And the fleet arrives. Okay, let's form up and inspect our comrades, shall we? Sounds like we'll be warping into the middle of a combat zone, and we'll have to adapt to the situation quickly. Time to test the new armager in a proper battle. We have an Armitage class, what looks like a Defiance or Valiant, a little Soyuz, and an Exeter class. A bit of a mix, but mostly firepower. We should fit right in. We are grateful beyond words for your help. You have arrived in the nick of time. New Romulus does not have the developed orbital defenses necessary to repel such an attack, and Admiral Kerarek is calling for as many ships as possible to defend the planet. The flotilla protecting the planet has been pushed back by the enemy assault. They are at their final line now. They need your help. Prepare for battle. Glad you could join us. Concentrate fire on their command ship. Okay, we were quick to respond, but it sounds dire. If we can locate the command ship, we should take it out. These appear to be the same aggressors that attacked us over Viranat. They've got the same energy emissions, and I don't recognise any of these designs. There seem to be smaller ships, implementing the same strategies they used against the Armager. They teleport behind us and try to pin the ships down with tractor beams to drag us back so that the ships with firepower have easier targets. No, not ships drones. One is engulfed in fire as it explodes, and we search for a new target. As we sail through the turmoil, fighters skim over the armager, off to engage their new target. Okay, that large ship in the middle must be the capital vessel, and it's then, banking away from it, that we sail over a Nefbar warship. Of course, the Romulan Republic has an alliance with the Klingons too, so for now, we're both on the same side. We begin to attract a lot of fire from these aggressors, and bank away sharply to avoid these net-like energy beams that seem to foreshadow a powerful attack. But then we're snared by these tractor drones. Deploying emergency manoeuvres, we pull away from their grip to avoid catastrophic fire. As the assault continues, we lose subsystems across the ship, our rear shielding fails, and our hull integrity takes a pounding to dangerous levels. Our shields begin to fluctuate and buckle, and as things seem dire, the command ship is destroyed, and the enemy forces begin to falter. This break in the fire is all we need. Repairs and a quick diversion of power later, we get our second wind. Heading back into the fray, we assist a Gorn vessel as it comes under fire by a smaller craft.
Another down. On to the next. The final ships are no match for the combined fire of the Federation, the Klingon Empire, and the Romulan Republic. And soon, with the stragglers mopped up, the battle is done. The Republic then hails us. On behalf of the Romulan Republic, thank you for your assistance today. You have saved our new world from destruction. We cannot begin to repay these deeds you have performed today, but know that your names will go down in history. Oh, why thank you. But now we've got an even bigger dilemma on our hands. We thought we were getting to the bottom of this Romulan mystery, but it seems it goes even deeper than expected. Let's report to Admiral Tanay and just take a moment to take stock of what just transpired. The Romulan Republic extends their sincere gratitude for your assistance in saving their homeworld. We now know the race you encountered there is called the Elachi and they are the Tall Shar's new allies. From what you found on Viranath, and what they tried to do at New Romulus, I'd say that whatever they're doing is not in our best interests. The Republic is continuing to search for clues to reveal what exactly is happening to the people being abducted by the Alachi. You, however, may be set to a different task. So, the Alachi are the allies of the Star Empire now, potentially along with the Herogen? It seems the Alachi aided in the attack on Viranat alongside the Tal Shi'ar, where the goal was to slaughter the entire population and blame the incident on the Republic. Perhaps to give their assault on New Romulus, the Republic's home, a viable excuse? That site was a true massacre though. As for the situation on Serini, I doubt they'll be able to remain neutral now, and I doubt they'll want to after they hear what the Tal Shi'ar did. This mission had us flung from one event to the next with no time to recover from our deductions and experiences. But for now, we wait for orders from Admiral Tanay once more. In the meantime, let's see what we can dig up on these new players, and perhaps we can recount what we found out about Installation 18. Thanks for watching, as we continue to explore the storylines and narrative of Star Trek Online, no matter how disjointed it can get at times. And I hope to see you next time for the continuing missions of the USS Armager. Thanks again, and goodbye.